So I think that uh, this conversation we're having, we're going to keep having it. And the stock is going to be down some quarters, more quarters it's going to be up. And we're going to wonder when it's going to end. So I want to try to fast forward to the end of where, where I think that this plays out. Is If you look at they're going to do $70 billion next year in revenue. I think uh, by 2027, a long time from now, they'll do $400 billion. Uh, you put a six and a half revenue multiple hardware, software, services, you get to 2,500. So that's a big jump from where we're at today. But I think we're just going to keep chopping our way up. Could be wrong. Competition could catch me, surprise me. Uh, but I think this is one that just has a, a really a decade of a tailwind to it that is uh, uh, even at these valuations can uh, create a value for, for investors. Welcome to Electrified. It's your host, Dylan Loomis. Hopefully you're having a great day. Quick shout out to my newest patrons, Roger and Jeffrey. Greatly appreciate the support. Speaking of, we just hit our first Patreon goal, so we would like to do a giveaway. So everybody that is signed up as a Patreon by the end of this week will be eligible to win a little gift basket that Ashley and I will put together of all Tesla stuff, one of which will be something like this. But as always, genuinely thank you all. And when it comes to the Tesla stock price, a lot of people have the question, well, now that we're in price discovery mode, where does Tesla stock go next? So that's what I'll be talking about over on Patreon next, if you're interested. So first thing today in some poetic news, Elon Musk is now worth more than ExxonMobil. So with Tesla crossing the trillion dollar mark, Elon is now worth somewhere in the neighborhood of $290 billion and has surpassed Exxon, whose market cap sits at around $272 billion. So honestly, it's really nice to see a company like Tesla that is being rewarded financially for doing the right thing and doing what is best for humanity, not just what is best for the bottom line, and in that process, having a great bottom line result. It's awesome to see. Sawyer on Twitter got a picture of 157 Tesla Mega Packs worth over about 150 million seen today preparing for delivery at Giga Nevada. Now, no, these are not already from the new Mega Pack factory that probably won't come online for at least a few months sometime into next year as they just broke ground in September. But this business line has massive potential for Tesla if indeed they can come up with the battery cell production to meet the demand. All right, so a couple quick things about Hertz. You know, how much are Tesla rentals going to cost? Well, first off, it says on the Hertz website, Tesla Model 3 rentals will be available for pickup starting November 7th. So we have roughly two weeks until rentals are available. Now it's going to vary, of course, by region, but they are offering limited time only charging included. Enjoy charging on us when you book a Tesla Model 3 and charge at a Tesla network charger before February 1st, 2022. And this should go without saying, but if you're in the market to rent a car and you wanna support Tesla, it would be a good move to go get one from Hertz. So on the Hertz website, I kept plugging in dates until there was a Model 3 available. A lot of November was already booked for the location that I was using, but into December, I finally found one that was available. As you can see, $105 per day if you pay later, or if you pay upfront, you can save about $10 and pay $95 per day. So going down for some context, what other options do we have in this segment? First up, a Chevy Spark or similar, $88 per day. So would you pay an extra $17 for a Tesla per day for your rental? over a Chevy Spark. Then we have a Ford Focus, $85 per day, a Mazda 3, $90 per day, so plus 15 for that Tesla, or a Volkswagen Jetta, 92 per day. So as you can see, the Tesla premium is anywhere from you know 10 to $20 more than other vehicles that are comparable. And in my opinion, that is a premium that many people will be willing to pay. Next up, a quick note about Tesla's market cap. So as you can see, Friday the 22nd, it was about 913 billion. Well, as of yesterday, it had gone up over $100 billion. Yes, a lot of that was driven by the Hertz news, but that was only a $4 billion order for a company that is not demand constrained. And so we have to remember two things. One, this is a much bigger story than just an order of 100,000 cars, which everybody talked about yesterday. And two, in my opinion, the stock market has changed a lot over the last 20 years with the prevalence of technology and how fast things change. People are pricing in more revenue into the future, into today's prices, 
and it's the people who strictly look at the book and look at the financials and try to extrapolate that out like people used to do for the last 50 years. It's not working anymore and it's not going to work. And when you pair that with unprecedented levels of money printing and fiscal policies and interest rates being near zero, it just sets up this perfect storm for certain companies to act as magnets for this available capital that is seeking a return. And look, I'm not at all saying this Tesla move isn't justified or that Tesla is somehow overvalued right now. I actually think it still has plenty of room to run. I'm simply agreeing with Elon here that we are indeed living in wild times. And this chart right here is kind of the cherry on top. As you can see, the Tesla performance is on the top half. On the bottom half, we have the University of Michigan car buyer sentiment at historic lows, while Tesla obviously has gone to historic highs. So this right here really encapsulates that Tesla is not just an automaker, despite what people on CNBC are still talking about. Yes, it's their core business, but they do so much more than that that is slowly being priced in. And you can't value the paradigm shift from internal combustion engine to electric vehicles because it's never happened on any level of scale, but it's happening now. So this is all very new. But moving on, quick fun fact, it took Tesla 18 years to reach 1 trillion. It took Bitcoin 12 years. Not a direct comparison, but there's a reason that I spend much of my time researching Bitcoin. Next up, Tesla actually put out a white paper on its Dojo technology. I have linked it below. It's about nine pages long. It is very technical, but if you want to check it out, you know where to find it. And in response to what Dojo will help Tesla do, Elon said reducing traffic fatalities by 90% seems likely, perhaps ultimately by over 99%. So there was a German news source that said the Model 3 is the best-selling car in Germany. That was previously the VW Golf's position. This is the end of an era for German car manufacturers, but Elon stepped in and had some encouragement for them, saying German car manufacturers will rebound strongly. They possess great talent, which will not sit idle. Also, Tesla will soon be a German car manufacturer. And back to the Tesla stock move, Elon said, strange that moved valuation as Tesla is very much a production ramp problem, not a demand problem. Adding, to be clear, cars sold to Hertz have no discount, same price as to consumers, confirming what we were all speculating about yesterday. We got more word on the FSD issue. Elon said, sorry to Tesla beta users for the trouble. Issue turned out to be power saving mode interacting with FSD. Our internal quality assurance fleet didn't see it because cars are constantly in use, so very rarely enter power saving mode. Internal QA will obviously test this case going forward. Kim on Twitter asked, so we can walk up to our Hertz rental with our key card and the car is automatically configured to our driver profile and settings. Elon says that feature is coming. And Elon also offered up some advice to Rivian saying prototypes are trivial compared to scaling production and supply chain. If those are solved, achieving positive gross margin is the next nightmare. Starting a second new vehicle line before the first is working will divide resources and amplify probability of failure. And I feel like I have to send you guys off today with a clip from CNBC where we have an analyst, not Gene Munster, talking about Tesla to 2500 in the next two quarters, which as you know, is very rare. And yes, I know that was a quick episode, but I have some things I need to take care of today. So please like the video if you did. Hope you guys have a wonderful day and a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters. Be on the lookout for that giveaway. Gene, it's BK. So let me ask you, you just put a, a $2,500, I mean, roughly, you didn't put a price target on it, but you said if you put a six multiple on it, you can get the $2,500. I happen to think maybe that probably gets there sooner than we think. Let's say it gets there within the next quarter or two, which I think is a possibility. Do you then sell it? And then does that turn you bearish? Yeah, I think uh, I think I would sell it uh, if I got to 2,500 in, in, let's say, a month. That's just uh, too much, too fast. You could argue that at, at where it's at today. But there has to be some sort of a framework around this. And you know, what I'm talking about is 2017. I'm talking about like a three, five year price target to double. That would be a great return and a typical investment. Uh, but if we got there in a short amount of time, um, I do. Uh, so I, I think that that would I would I would stick to uh, the discipline and, and think about how much is getting priced in. And that would be too far too fast for me. And I would uh, be selling at twenty five hundred.